Winter in the Arctic is an endless polar night. Snowy owls are one of the few creatures that live here. Summer brings relief, but also new challenges. For this snowy owl pair, it's raising a family. They have a nest of fragile newborns, and their lives are no longer their own. There are five hungry mouths that constantly need to be fed. And predators are over every hill. This is one family's story of survival in the harsh Arctic tundra. And these parents must work magic to keep their chicks alive. It's winter in the heart of the Midwest, and some remarkable visitors have arrived. These are young snowy owls. They can appear unexpectedly in places like this, and then just vanish. Snowy owls are mystical creatures, a startling sight in broad daylight among the homes and farmlands of Wisconsin. These young snowy owls are here to avoid the worst of the Arctic winter, much farther north. The weather down here is less extreme. And for a young predator, prey is easier to find. These owls haven't yet fully mastered all the skills needed to survive an Arctic winter, as their parents can. A rare glimpse of them like this is as close an encounter with a snowy owl as most of us will ever have. They belong to a far away winter world too harsh for us mere mortals. Snowies are one of the biggest owls in the world, standing two feet tall, with a wingspan of five feet. They also have extraordinary vision. Unique telescopic sight allows them to lock on to prey from great distances. But they'll need more than skill to survive in the Arctic. They'll need courage and determination to take on the land of snow and ice. This is the Arctic. In winter, the sun remains permanently below the horizon in a continuous polar night. Adult snowy owls hunt here throughout these cold, dark months, surviving as if by magic. Only the most experienced are capable of living year-round in this eerie, bleak, frozen land. As well as being telescopic, these extraordinary eyes are sensitive enough to see in this permanent twilight. 
Being powerful owls, they can take large prey, such as arctic and snowshoe hares. There's often little choice. There is not much life up here at all. But light is slowly returning to the Arctic. In the dim glow of the Arctic dawn, the true majesty of the snowy owl can be seen in its frozen white kingdom. There is little relief from the constant wind. For adult snowies, the lengthening daylight means the chance to breed is drawing closer. It may not look like it, but the start of the short Arctic summer is racing towards them. The owls must nest on the first snow-free patch of tundra they can find. From year to year, this can be in a totally different place, anywhere across the entire Arctic. It's late May, and if we're to succeed in filming snowy owls, we're going to have to find them soon. Our intrepid team, led by cinematographer Michael Mayle, sets out across the tundra. Snowy owls could be breeding anywhere from Siberia to Canada. Not even the scientists know where we should be. If numbers were high in one area last year, it doesn't mean that this summer will be the same. There's evidence from regurgitated pellets that owls have been here recently, but no sign of a nest. Days pass and we still haven't found any breeding snowies. We hope this year won't be one of those when hardly any owls breed at all. It's June already, and all around us, snow and ice are melting at great speed. The exposed tundra attracts migrants from the south. They're all looking for a place to nest. Summer lasts just a few short months. Anything choosing to breed must get a move on. The sun now stays permanently above the horizon. It will not set again for 82 days. A lead from a scientist has brought us to the north slope of Alaska. In some years, the tundra here is dotted with dozens of snowy owl nests. So far though, it looks like we've gotten it all wrong and there will never be time now to move to another part of the Arctic. Then, a sudden attack by a male snowy owl makes us think that we've walked into his breeding territory. Anything that comes within a mile of a snowy owl's nest can get attacked like this, even wolves and polar bears. We have to set up the hide a long way back to avoid disturbing him again. It's a huge relief to be settled in. The much larger female is definitely sitting on eggs. And at last, 
we can start to observe and film. She's the only nesting owl on the whole tundra. We can't see another breeding pair anywhere else in this landscape. If she fails, our efforts are doomed. The absence of any other owls must be saying something. Is our pair doing the right thing by trying to breed in this spot? One owlet has hatched. There could be more. We know that snowy owls can lay up to 14 eggs, the biggest clutch size of any owl. The owlets hatch every few days, but under her blanket of feathers, we have no idea yet how many there are. The male can be seen from way off. His bright white plumage signals to others that this is his territory. With the more camouflaged female keeping the owlets warm, catching prey is all up to him. In weather this good, he must spend all his time hunting. Conditions here can change in an instant. Fog or strong winds will make it impossible for him. The success of this year's breeding will now depend entirely on how much prey there is for him to hunt. He's caught something. It's a brown lemming. On a rare, calm day like this, he can really put the hours into hunting. While the chicks are this small, it's her job to break the food up into bite-sized morsels. Those little mouths could choke on more. She's so far-sighted, she can't see the owlets when they're this close to her face. The bristles over her beak help her feel for them. Are there no other owls because they know there's not enough food? Snowies sometimes prey on pectoral sandpipers and red phalaropes that are also trying to nest. Though for the owls to raise young successfully, there must be a good supply of lemmings. The trouble is, across the Arctic, lemmings can be utterly unpredictable. Even in one small area, their numbers can erupt or disappear at any moment throughout the summer. For snowy owls, this makes breeding a complete gamble. There have been years on this patch of tundra with more than 30 pairs of owls breeding at the same time. This year, the place is deserted, except for our pair. We found one abandoned nest, which isn't a good sign. And now, we're increasingly concerned that our pair will fail too. We can count five owlets in the nest. Five. They'll need a huge amount of food as they grow. While they are this age, the owlets need their mother's warmth, particularly when it's this cold and windy. 
With no high point to look out from, their father hovers and uses his telescopic vision to scour the tundra below for movement. He can't afford to miss like this. Only he can do the hunting. She must keep them safe and warm. They're vulnerable on the ground like this. And there's one predator to really watch out for. Polar bears. With the sea ice melted, they are forced into sharing this part of the tundra with our owls. If polar bears find the youngsters unattended, they will eat them. This time, the bears are moving up the coastline though they may well be back. It's not for lack of trying that he is not making regular deliveries. There are just so few lemmings around. This is forcing her out to hunt herself. She's leaving the owlets much earlier than she should. The youngest owlet is only days old. She should be there to keep it out of the freezing wind. The male has caught a small bird. It's a phalarope. In her eagerness to get him back out hunting again, she comes in to do the feeding. We haven't seen many phalaropes around at all. He's done well to catch this one. One small bird is never going to satisfy the hunger of all five owlets. The oldest and biggest tend to reach the food first, and there's not much to go around. Sometimes, the male doesn't come in for hours on end. The lack of prey forces her off the nest time and again. We're starting to worry things may be taking a turn for the worse. Without her to keep them warm, the owlets are seeking refuge out of the wind, down below the mound. They're too young to leave the nest. This has never been recorded before. We're worried to see this strange behavior. 
The smallest owlet is only 10 days old, and by nature of its size, is the most vulnerable. A glaucous gull has been hanging around, and perhaps knows that things aren't going very well for this family of owls. She can't afford to travel too far from the nest, though she is bringing back virtually nothing for them. It's as if she doesn't know where to turn. These owlets really aren't getting enough food. A half-shut eye can mean a bird isn't well. The youngest is looking alarmingly small. Their father is rarely off the wing and hovers higher and higher on the lookout for food. His efforts have paid off, but it's a long flight back to the nest. For the owlets, this couldn't have come soon enough. It's a race to get fed, though the youngest and smallest is stuck at the back of the bunch. The male seems to have found a promising hunting ground way off, which is rich in lemmings. He is obviously a good hunter. There has just been so little to catch. The bigger owlets can consume a whole lemming in a few gulps. Things are finally looking up. With food coming in, perhaps our family's fortunes will change. Though we're noticing an increasing divide between the youngest owlet and its older siblings. Their mother seems to be aware that the youngest is struggling. She's trying to do something about it. Unlike many other birds of prey, all the evidence indicates that snowies are particularly caring mothers. What we're seeing in front of us certainly supports that. <laughs> Despite her attempts to help the owlet by trying to feed it, the little one's strength is visibly failing. At this age, each owlet needs as many as five lemmings a day.
The weather can change so quickly here in the Arctic that the owlets need to be well nourished or they won't survive any colder spells. Freezing fogs like this can roll in off the Arctic Ocean in a matter of hours. And the bad weather keeps the lemmings underground. Even she is now begging to the male for food. How long is this fog going to last? Some eight hours later, it's easing, though thick fogs like these can linger for days. Things have taken another turn for the worse. The youngest owl that stands weak and isolated. It no longer has the strength to stay with the others. She's detecting that it's too weak to feed now. though she can at least brood it tenderly. It's really touching to see such a gentle side to her nature. Even the older owlets now seem concerned for their ever-weakening sibling. In his relentless search, our male is now prospecting for lemmings right out towards the coast. This is a good few miles from the nest. The lemming numbers can rise and fall so quickly. It's impossible to know where to look. There could be small pockets of them anywhere on the tundra. There doesn't seem to be any movement from the youngest owlet now. It must be dead. She knows this too. She has invested everything into trying to save her youngest. But there are four others that need her attention. Right in front of us, we notice a sudden and complete change in her. In what seems to us a desperate measure, she feeds the lifeless body to the others. This might at least keep them alive.
There's absolutely no sign of the male. With her mate nowhere to be seen, and her youngest owlet dead, what will she do next? Our pair's efforts to breed are turning into a disaster. Hours later, we spot him with a lemming. He hurries back to the nest. But when he gets there, no one's home. Much to his apparent surprise, all the chicks are off the nest and calling to him from the tundra. But he takes a moment. It turns out that he's the last of the family to give up the nest. He continues to fly far to hunt. And at last, he's found the density of lemmings he's been waiting for all summer. Eager to get a meal, the owlets stumble towards him. With our family no longer on the nest and moving hundreds of yards a day, we have to keep up. Michael constructs a more mobile hide. A day like this in July can turn foul in hours. A rainstorm can appear from nowhere. Nothing is easy for these snowy owls. Yet whatever challenges come at them, they seem to keep going. We've experienced more than a few drizzly days up here, but freezing rain like this can be a killer. There is no shelter on the tundra. It is two long days before the weather starts to clear. The owlets are equipped with thick gray down. It's one of the best insulators in the natural world.
Within five days, all the owlets are over half a mile away from the nest. It's astonishing to see them waddle across the tundra like this. It's such a relief for the family, and for us, that he has found a good hunting spot. The owlets look so much stronger. At this age, they need more food than ever. They're growing exponentially. It is now mid-July, and summer has reached its height. Flowers like Arctic poppies add a splash of color to this otherwise bleak landscape. All the other birds breeding here will be on the wing long before our young snowy owls. The little snowies are in no hurry to grow up. They still want to wrestle and play until some movement on the tundra catches their curious eye. One has spotted a golden plover. Someday these young snowies will be skilled predators. But not today. For now, they're just chicks, each easily distracted by the other. Something has alarmed the male. It's polar bears again, patrolling the coast, waiting for the sea ice to form. This is a hungry time of year for them. The owlets have to stay hidden. Their gray down keeps them well camouflaged, though their scent may give them away. If the bears get much closer to the owlets, the adults may have to take them on and stupid them like they did at us when we arrived. But luckily, the wind doesn't give the owlets away and the bears move on.
Our female seems set on taking the owlets to the coast, where the male is hunting. She flies between different mounds, as if to encourage the owlets to follow. The little family of snowies is slowly marching ever closer to their next meal. They're more than a mile from the nest now, and their father's hunting grounds are only a short distance away. But there's a problem. A river blocks their path. The owlets still can't fly, and to our knowledge, they can't swim either. What are they going to do now? At least they can have a drink and a bath. The temperature in July can at times creep up to well over 50 degrees. For the Arctic, this is a baking hot day. And trudging along under a thick coat of down is hard work. All this warmth and water brings on another problem. Mosquitoes. They are torture, especially around the eyes. By the end of July, most of the tundra is covered in mosquitoes. Only a breeze will keep them at bay. Maybe this is another reason the owl family is heading to the coast. But they're going to have to get across this river, somehow. These owls continue to amaze us. But now, it's every sibling for itself. And not all of them are so bold.
ducks seem to offer some encouragement. And this owl that plucks up the courage to try again. made it. We never imagined we would see this. It has never been recorded or filmed before. The owls have moved on and the good news is the camera team can finally get out of the hide. That also turns out to be the bad news. Time for us to move on too. Almost a week has passed. The owlet's flight feathers are growing fast and they could take to the wing any day now. The whole family has reached the shoreline where the coastal breeze keeps all the mosquitoes at bay. There is an ample food supply here. The adults are catching more than is even wanted. The owlets exercise their wing muscles and snatch at pretend prey. We can tell the youngsters apart now. There are two males and two females. The females have more dark barring on their wings. The season is turning in front of us. There's already a noticeable change in the colors on the tundra. It's only August, yet these are the first signs of autumn. Brent geese are gathering in large flocks, ready to fly south. But the adult snowies will stay, hunting lemmings, snowshoe hares and ptarmigan through the winter. Some will head to pockets of open water in the Arctic ice to hunt seabirds. But their offspring must leave. They could never have all the skills needed to stay alive through a winter up here. Only very experienced snowy owls can do that. Our youngsters will go where the weather will be less extreme and prey more certain. All the summer visitors to this most northern edge of Alaska are now preparing to leave. With few obstacles to avoid, the tundra is a good place to learn how to fly. Our snowy owlets persevere with all their strength just as in everything else we've seen them do. The sun is dropping ever closer to the horizon. The polar day is coming to an end and our owlets are taking to the sky for the first time.
As we leave these astonishing birds, we realize what it takes to live and breed up here. Our snowy owls have done amazingly well to raise four owlets in an impossibly difficult year. It's not by magic that they succeed in this challenging place. It's by their own skill and their remarkable will to survive. <laughs>